Good to go. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Judas Priest. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. We can't wait to answer them. And special thanks to Nikki Six for having us. Okay, here we go. Uh, Manuel from Lilburn. If you could put two Judas Priest albums together to describe the new album, which two would it be? It's really difficult. Really difficult to think about. I would say maybe a little bit of stained class. Maybe painkiller. <laughs> I was about, uh, I thought I could join in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change. No, 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 I'm sorry. You start again, start again. I forgot what I said now. I said a bit of stone <laughs> and a bit of British steel. Could be completely wrong there, but anyway, there you go. Adrian from Atlanta, Georgia. What's your favourite way to support the arts and education? I think you do it with the music, obviously. You know, it's a great communicator, and I think music inspires people to. Um, learn how to play guitar or play the drums or sing so i think i think the, the favorite way is just you know making your music and getting out there pedro from san paulo will this be the last priest album no absolutely not thomas from woodland is up washington what do you do with your free time while on tour sleep i'm a great believer of sleep now actually Getting rest is, is pretty important because Priest puts out a thousand percent every night, so you try and get as much as that in as, as you possibly can. But you do, you know, you pass the hours, you watch movies, read books, whatever, to, to get you from, you know, show to show. Michael from Jonesboro, why has Rob never played the harmonica on stage for songs of the Rock and Roll Rubble Mall? I think we only used the harmonica on um, Cheetah, didn't we, Glenn? Glenn's out of frame, there he is. Yeah, I think you have played it on stage, but not, not for a long time. Maybe I should get the harp out again. It's probably, probably a little bit revolting and mouldy. It's a great instrument, the harp as we call it, the blues harp. Who knows, it might make a reappearance. John from Mori, is there any track on the new album that you particularly like the most and why? I love um, Redeemer of Souls, the title track. I think it's just a very precise, articulate song. And, it just carries all of the the, um, the classic vibe of Judas Priest. Mario from Madrid. Hello, Metal Gods. I remember when Glenn mentioned a track called Keep the Faith in an interview in 2011. Is this track on the Redeemer of Souls album with another title, or is it still unreleased? It's still unreleased, Mario. We were working on it, and then it wasn't quite going the way we, we, we uh, anticipated it to go, so we've put it in the vaults for now. So keep a listen out for what may or may not happen with that in the future. Todd from Norfolk, do any of you find it hard or difficult to keep up the pace to continue to tour and put out new music compared to 20 years ago? Thanks and keep rocking. Thank you, Todd. You know, your heart's in the same place. I mean, we love metal, we love writing metal, recording, playing it. It obviously gets a little, a little bit more challenging as you move on in life, but when you get out on that stage and new fans start screaming, you're in the you know top of the world. William from Rio Rancho, what was your all-time favourite song to play live? Still got to say Victim of Changes, just because it's got all of the you know the great ingredients of a metal song. You've got the riffs, you've got the twin guitar, you've got the quiet section in the middle and the thundering ending. So I've always loved that song. Roberta from Anchorage, how does it feel being considered considered the highest of high Heavy metal rock bands, well that's all back at you Roberta, because you put us in this place, you know, you gave us the life in metal, so we're, uh, we're high and highest, thanks to the Priest fans all over the world. Rebecca from New Zealand, if you could go back and change anything about one particular album, what would it be? I think it's all good, you know, you, you leave your trail of, of your work behind you and you reflect, and sometimes you look back and think, well, if we could have done this and that, but that's life, you know. The fact is that uh, it's there and, and it should be treasured and you, uh, you, you enjoy listening to it and, and all the ingredients that were there, the moment that you made it, are intact. Gaza, Gaza from West Brom. Will we ever see Priest and Sabbath on the same bill? Well, we did that once, Gaza. We did the um, Ozfest tour some years ago when Priest and Sabbath played together. But I will say this, it would be amazing if just for old metal time's sake we were able to do at least one more show or one more tour together. You guys should start hustling and 
social media ring and get that to happen. Antonia from Gabravo, uh, how do you guys feel after so many years on stage? How does it make you feel when people call you legends? We still feel so much energy and electric vibe, whatever you call it. We feed off what you give us, you know, so the crazy the crowd gets, the crazy we get, the, you give us so much strength. And, you know, legend, again, you're part of what makes these statements come up. We don't, I don't think we consider ourselves legends, but we'll certainly take the title, thank you very much. Martin from jean Pierre, will there be a tour to support the new album Redeemer of Souls? Yes, Martin, there is. If you go on priest.com now with the Facebook site, you'll see the dates as and when they come up, they're put there, so keep going back to find out where we're playing next. Bethany from Dallas, what took so dang long? Are you talking about Redeemer of Souls? It only took about 18 months to put together from writing, recording, and then getting the whole thing produced, mixed, mastered, which is pretty fair speed by any band's uh, accounts, you know. Between Nostradamus and, and Redeemer of Souls, of course, we did the big epitaph tour. We had to do all writing, we took a little bit of break here and there, so we were not lazying about, but didn't take too dang long. Uh, Samantha from Mexico City, is there anything you can't live without? Metal. Can't live without my metal. And tea. And Kit Kats. <laughs> Brian from Los Angeles. What song do you remember most from your childhood? I always tell this story about my aunt. She gave me an old record player when I was a kid. And in the record player was a bunch of uh, what they call 45 singles. Plastic things with a hole in the middle. And then he put a needle on them and he played music. And so there was stuff there by Little Richard and Elvis and Bill Haley and the Comets. And I've always said the first time I heard Little Richard's voice, that was really electric for me. I forget what the title was, but it was Little Richard. Cuba from Warsaw, Poland. Who was the main riff songwriter for Redeemer of Souls? Who wrote the riff? Was it Glenn? Oh, the song? Yeah, the song. Glenn. Huh? Yeah. It was Glenn. Glenn. Glenn was the main riff songwriter for Redeemer of Souls. Huh? Oh, that's not sure. What is, okay. Both of us really. It's both of them. Both of them. Peter from Mannheim, considering all of your albums, where would you rank Redeemer of Souls? The 17th. <laughs> it's, it's the 17th one. But I think what you mean is like, pardon me, compared to British Steel, compared to Painkiller. For us, they're all the same, you know. I mean, when, when you've had such a long life, there are certain records that push forward a little more than others. That's just natural. But I think we've always had a lot of love and affection for everything that we've ever done. Daniel from Mississippi. For this album, did you guys ever think about using any older, unreleased material? It's all fresh, Daniel. There, there are some things that we keep. We have these vaults of metal riffs and stuff, which is great to go through. Uh, and, and you can be inspired by listening to, say, a riff you put down like two or three years ago. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll use that riff or that vocal melody, but it's inspirational. You should, when you're in a band, you should tape and record everything. Even if you don't use it, just keep it, you know, in the vault. Tony from Northampton, when will your UK tour dates be released? We're working on them. We're working on them, Tony. So, again, we, we are going to come and play some home dates, obviously. That would be foolish to say that we're not. Uh, we are. So, as and when. See, so we're just about to start this American side of things in October. And then we'll go through Christmas and have a break. And then we'll obviously be doing more dates next year. And we will be playing the UK, but we don't know exactly when just now. So keep going back to priest.com and the Facebook. Saga from Mumbai. When did you first realise that you wanted to play heavy metal? I suppose when I heard the first heavy rumblings of, of rock, you know, people like Purple, people like um, The Who, for example. Early progressive rock like King Crimson when I heard stuff like that. Even even Floyd, you know, some of the stuff that Floyd was doing was quite heavy, so I, I don't know, it's probably, I mean, when did metal start? When did metal begin? The late 60s, early 70s, whenever it started to happen, and of course Priest was there from the beginning. Bruce from the UK, what advice can you give guys to, what advice can you guys give to up and coming metal bands? I think it's simple, first of all, really, you know, have a great time with each other. 
don't get in for the money, don't get in for the fame and the success and all that because that's, that, that's irrelevant. You get together because you want to be in the same band, you love what you're doing, you love the music that you're making and just try and be as original as you can. It's great to be inspired and be influenced a little bit by other people, but nobody wants a copycat, you know. Find your own sound. Bill from Connecticut, are you guys going to pull out some obscure tunes uh, this time for all the hardcore fans? Uh, for the two, yeah, it's the 30th anniversary of Defenders of the Faith as well this year, amongst everything else. So we're thinking of looking at taking a couple of songs from that um, record. And again, you, you know, your classics, your favourites, Breaking the Law, Living After Midnight and so on. But uh, we're still working on the set list, so we don't know exactly just yet. A couple more to do. Charles from London, what's your favourite album cover from the Priest catalogue? I've always thought that Sad Wing is a Destiny kicked it off for me. And, um, and even now, when you look at, if you look at the artwork on Sad Wings of Destiny, and you look at the artwork at Redeemer of Souls, all these years later, you can still see the connectivity in what we've always tried to project with the artwork of our records. Okay, that's it. Thanks for submitting your questions for us. We've really enjoyed answering them all. And thanks again to Nikki Six, Heavy Metal, Judas Priest, over and out.